Let me say a special hello to all the WZY 95.9 FM listeners. Of course, folks, it's in the village with the dark triplets on WZY 95.9 FM, our guest for the night, no other than Mr. the President and General of the OWT, Mr. Ansel Roger. So welcome. OWTU. OWT. OWTU. So you are in the village with, we, we, our program is called In the Village with the Dark Triplets, but we only have two thirds of us here tonight. So the D is normally Diana. She's considered to be the storm. She's away in England. A is myself. I am Anselm. They call me the Flash or Wall Street. G is considered to be Gary. Gary is considered to be Phantom. And we have another four gentlemen who join us occasionally. You know, he's, his name is, 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 is um, look, look up again, Tommy, Tommy. And Tommy is considered to be the outside child and the ladies in the chat call him the love child. Mr. Roger, how do you want me to address you, sir? President General will be fine. Or PG. President, or PG. Pre PG. Yeah. All right, PG will be fine. Yeah. Then. First of all, we want to thank you so very kindly, you know, for giving us the opportunity to have a chat with you. And 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 PG, this chat is all encompassing. We, 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 when we come into the village, we just keep it real in the village. You understand? So, you know, we, we, we don't all know bars or, you know, we don't, we don't kind of try to censor people or anything like that, you know. Okay. By the way, I, 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 I myself, you know, I am a born Trinidadian. You know, I came from Chumaka Clavantil, yeah. you know, building one apartment, two on. So I come from the belly of the beast in Trinidad and Tobago, so to speak. You know, and I've been in this country 44 years now, you know. So I just celebrate my guy. He's also living here in New Jersey, too. He's a, a activist too as well. And we do a lot of things together here in New Jersey. So, so PG, how are you doing, sir? Well, I'm fine, thank you, given the, the current situation. You know, every day, everything has to be put in context. Mm -hmm. So given the current situation here, yeah, well, worldwide, but in particular in Trinidad and Tobago, I'm fine. And if you permit me, uh, what should I call you, Wall Street? Oh. <laughs> well, Wall Street is fine. Wall Street is Wall Street fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you all um, and the diaspora outside there as to the not just the Oil Fields Workers Trade Union, but the Joint Trade Union Movement, an organization which I have the pride honor and privilege at this time to lead. And that is an organization of the majority of trade unions in the country, some 18 trade unions across all of the sectors, uh, the uh, banking financial sector, the uh, energy sector, the, um, the manufacturing sector, and so on, the fuel distribution, uh, electricity, uh, of course, basically, uh, the multi-sector uh, representation of workers who work there. But first off, before we go, Permit me to thank Almighty God for sparing our lives for yet another day that we are able to have this conversation in the land of the living is only through the mercy and the blessings of Almighty God. And that all of the blessings that he would have bestowed upon us worldwide uh, and continue, of course, to uh, bestow on the OWTU, we are very thankful for that. We in the OWTU, we are a praying union. And, um, and on another occasion, some of the things that you know about uh, my union, you being uh, a born Trinidadian um, or Trinbagonian, we, I can facilitate you with um, some of the richness of the history of the trade union movement, and in particular, the Alfie's Workers Trade Union. And so there's where I would want to start uh, expressing uh, my concern this afternoon, if I'm allowed to to take it from here. No, I mean, you know, you know, go ahead. You know, we have we also have a little a few questions for you as well, and there are people in the chat who have some questions for you as well. But you you can continue, PG. Yeah. Well, thank you very much once again, and for you and the other uh, hosts of this very important program. Uh, Let me just know, one thing, sir, is that we want you to be totally free to speak. Yeah you know, yeah. as what you think is right, and to please, yes. the door is open, please. And thanks again for that, because it is an opportunity, the OWTU always grab us being an independent uh, trade union, speaking our mind 
however or wherever it falls and so on and wherever, whatever the consequences of that is. And I think that we uh, would want to, when I was uh, invited and um, through our chief education and research officer, he made the, the link, we saw that we should embrace this opportunity. Here you have concerned uh, citizens, well, well, born and bred Trinidadians outside of the country expressing concern in what is happening in Trinidad and Tobago, and therefore we should use the opportunity to um, let them hear our voice. And, and that is why I'm thanking you again. Well, let me start by saying emphatically that as far as we are concerned, a concern that is shared by a significant number of uh, people in the country, that the Republic, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is in a state of deep crisis. And I say so, not likely. Deep crisis in so far as the body, uh, political leadership is concerned. Deep crisis in so far as the economy is concerned. Deep crisis in so far as the social uh, structures are concerned. And therefore, political, economic, and social crisis, that is the, I sum up Trinidad and Tobago as, as being uh, described as that at this moment. And let me also say that that crisis was not brought on by the pandemic. Let me, I'm, I want to be emphatic about that. The problems we are facing in Trinidad and Tobago has been exacerbated by the pandemic, but it is not the creation of the pandemic. And therefore, long before COVID-19 hit the shores of our country, our, all of the telltale signs, all of the red flags, all of the uh, issues were, uh, were affecting um, Trinbegonians. So Trinidad and Tobago. And, and I want to say that we are also in a state of very, very deep disappointment. Deep disappointment because we thought that we would have moved on and moved away from a construct where those who ask for the job to govern the country and where they ask, uh, they condemn what was uh, occurring before and having been given the job to uh, take care of the country and to improve the quality of lives of the citizens, they have they have fallen down on that, on that, on that job for quite so a Mr. while. Roger. Are you saying that you are unhappy with the current government? Are you saying the OWT? Well, 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 that's, an that's an understatement. Um, <laughs> it is a, it's a, a, the height of an understatement that we are deeply disappointed. We are unhappy with the uh, current um, number of turns of events. Let me, let me sum it up for you. The government of Trinidad and Tobago is a government that represents 1% of the citizenry of this country. And why do I say that? It is because all of their policies, all of the uh, evidence points to one set of people benefiting under this PNM government. And I like to describe it because we are with a PNM government right now. So the 99% of the citizens in this country cannot today, as we speak, say that their lives have been improved as a result of the leadership of this country being taken over by the PNM. Let me go further to ask a question. Uh, perhaps rhetorically, that I am certain that when I ask the question, no citizen who wants to be honest can say that his or her life has been improved over the last six years. In other words, the lives of the citizens of this country, it did not even stay the same, it deteriorated. So that what is the state of the country? We have massive job losses, problems in the energy sector, problems with our um, public uh, utilities and so on. But all of those things come from a lack of proper planning, a lack of proper foresight, a lack of proper uh, wanting the best for the people. And therefore, I want to, to, to tell the world that this is not what was envis envisaged for Trinidad and Tobago when Dr. Eric William 
would have um, taken this country into independence. This is not the type of, of country that was envisaged then. And so what we are seeing here is a level of Tokyo Dam social injustice and so on. And those at the level or, or at the lowest ebb of the economic ladder, they are destined to stay there. And we have no more middle class in this society. That has gone, dissipated. And what we have now is uh, super rich, and we are heading to have masses being extremely poor. And it is as though there's a, it is a, it is it is wrong to be uh, as as ordinary citizen. It is wrong, and as though it is wrong in the eyes of the government for people to climb the economic ladder. Ordinary black people in Trinidad and Tobago, like it is wrong for in the eyes of Dr. Rowley and his government for them to have progressive jobs and so on well-paying jobs so that they can take care of their families, move them out of that lower strata into a higher level of progressiveness where they can, where we can, and where we can be better off. That in the eyes of Dr. Rowley and his PNM, this current PNM government, and let me make a distinction here, eh? this current PNM government is different. They are different people, they are different, and sometimes we wonder where did they come from? And where How are they, they different? How are they different? Well, they are different because How I already exposed this philosophy that mm. Dr. William wanted for this country. So Dr. William wanted to raise the social um, strata. He wanted the country to be independent economically. He wanted to establish uh, uh, economic independence through state enterprises and so on. This PNM want to reverse all of that so that you have the shutting down of uh, a refinery, a symbol of economic independence if there was ever one and you have now de a dependence now on fuel coming from elsewhere putting hardship on those on all of us in the country you have the preparation of a budget that is going to choke blood out of stone of the citizens at a time when they can least afford and who are the people that are going to suffer most in this country you ask them if there's any policy or any thinking about raising the standard of living of those who are the lowest end. And there's not. There's none. There's is the intention to have um, everybody, CPEP eyes, and I'm not now despising the CPEP workers. Our position for the CPEP workers is that they should raise to their level of remuneration and their standard of living should be uh, elevated to the other sectors not the other sectors um, downgraded to them. So that is the type of um, Trinidad and Tobago that uh, Dr. Rowley sees. Closure of the steel plant, closure of the refinery, closure of the petrochemical plant, closure of uh, manufacturing. This is what we're experiencing in Trinidad and Tobago. And nobody, the strongest PNM supporter, can dispute those facts. There are no plans to really grow the economy. No new revenue stream. The government simply placed all of that burden on the backs and shoulders of who? The 99% of us, the masses. So they will tax you more and tax you more and tax you more. That's the three plans they have for now, raising revenue. No, Mr. Roger, PG, you said, right, um, I, I think this is a somewhat broad statement. You, know? you said no citizens can say that their lives have improved. Right, it is not somewhat of a broad statement to say no citizens instead of some citizens can say that their lives have not been improved. No, well, that's true. Only one percent can say that their, their lives have been improved. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, so, that's so very true. And when we talk, when we talk, when we make these statements, we make it against the background of what we see on the ground, what we feel on the ground. You have over 100,000 persons at home now, right now, and counting their lives have not been improved. They are without a job since PNM came into our office, and, and the number is counting. And I walk the street from Port of Spain to see just to, across Trinidad and Tobago, and the people who I'm talking about, they tell me, comrade, and can I call you comrade? They yes, tell sir. me, comrade, yes, anybody who are for Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Trinidad and Tobago's development, to me as a comrade. And therefore, those persons tell, they tell us, comrade, that, hey, listen, we suffer in. 
we are some, and, that's, and, that, and that is the masses. Of course, you have here and there, you would have people who would eat or catch a bone that fall off the plate of the um, those persons who are corruptly gobbling. But um, but generally, the masses are suffering in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's not a good report. Uh, it's not a nice report for me to make, but it's a factual report. So you would close down a ref you would close down a refinery because what? You that is the start of a monumental plan to get rid of what the trade union movement because the trade union movement is exercising a level of independence that which we always exercise that which you if you pay attention to you will be on the road to recovery and so on so instead of an inclusion it's exclusion so when we say for instance so dr rowley listen your plans for the economy is wrong we are talking about a uh, a, a different plan where you can let all of those persons, the 1%, let them invest in the economy. All those persons who want government contract and so on and bank their money outside of the country, let them bring it back here in hard times and let them in um, um, put into uh, economic activity so that people can go to work and so on. Incentivize them to do that. All they want to do is to uh, extract the foreign exchange, bank it in foreign banks. That's still happening. Eh? Bank it in foreign banks and so on, and sap out of the country. We say no. Mobilize the credit union, the credit union movement, the, all of the people's organization, the local banks and so on. Let them invest in Trinidad and Tobago's economy, and let's get economic um, activity rolling. But no. So, Mr. So, so Mr. Roger, here's a question for you. Right? We always have questions for the church. Suppose now. Yes. Why is Petrochin being sold to foreign investors and not local investors? But, well, is that a rhetorical question? Because really, well, let me say, um, it's unfortunate that that is the road that the government has taken in the face of what we would have done. Mm. Let, me, let me explain something here. The union would have gone out and would have invested enormous our resources, financial resources, to put together a comprehensive world-class team that would have proven to the world that we can operate the refinery that is after the closure. Now, mind you, we were against the closure, and we are still, that's a wrong decision. At some other time, we will talk about that. But the refinery haven't been closed. The union did not just fold its arm and wonder what happens next. When they put it up for sale and they offered, um, they offered uh, the union we accepted the offer. We said, but no, you want to set us up? But no, we said, no, no, no. Oh, let, let's, let's look at this thing differently. We accept the offer. And when we accepted the offer, it was not a fly-by-night acceptance. We would have put together through um, our experience with all of those international um, operators and so on, a comprehensive team, put together a bid, which bid won some 76 other competitors. You think about that. This is a proud moment for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. That here you have a union, a local union, would have put together a bid for um, an asset in the country on behalf of the people and would have beat out some 76 other international players, big players, because of the value that we put on those assets. And the value we put on those assets, comrade, is not just for uh, uh, oil and gas and to operate the refinery, you know, is that the people must own something. That they have the 1% owning almost the whole country. Here you have an opportunity for the people to own something. And if Dr. Rowley and the PNM was serious, they would have ensured that we, the, the union, on behalf of the people, own something that ordinary black people, ordinary people on the ground own something, Indians and Africans. Ordinary people own something in Trinidad and Tobago and, and, and try to strike a balance. Instead, what they try to do is to set us up, um, whittle down our resources, and then say, well, look, all you can't make, all you don't have no money, and then go back out now to get international people um, to, uh, to own those assets. And that's where we are. So you, you see the vision of these people. You might very well find that the 1%, and we're looking on very, very closely, the 1% uh, have some connection or benefit with those international players who eventually uh, will own this the um, refinery. We in the ODWT, you may say, we in the ODWT would have struggled for national ownership of those assets, saying that Texaco and the multinationals operated those assets in the interest 
of the multinationals. And therefore, the people were not getting enough out of it. And we were struggling. And when Dr. Williams agreed and they purchased the refinery and the oil industry in this country, it was on the basis that the people should benefit from it. What is happening now, comrade, is that this PNM, this different construct of a PNM, is putting back in the hands of the multinationals mm -hmm. all of those assets for which the people would have struggled, for which uh, Williams would have wanted something different for Trinidad. It's a different Trinidad. And if you come to Trinidad now, you might meet the rough on the ground and the post in the air because it's a different <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago operating here under this fellow they call. Um, so, 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 PG, let me ask this question. Is it that the winning of the bid was politically motivated at that point in time? Well, we had the best proposal. So there was, there was really no choice. But what they saw is an opportunity to, um, to because it was around um, in local government election time. So That's they saw that. The yeah. Yes, the so they saw that. But we, we saw an opportunity having the best proposal eh? because we have the workers with all of the experience. We have, the, of course, the knowledge and so on. We have the uh, international operators and so on and, and all of those um, members of the consortium. And we also have, because those persons saw the type of proposal that we had, we, the banks were interested in working with us. You know what they did, these people did? While we were discussing the whole, the whole issue of this, um, of financing this refinery, they went out and mortgaged, borrow money again, unknown to us, while we were having those discussions at the table. So it's like you now are going to, you, you agree that you're going to buy um, your partner house, your uncle, whoever it is house, and while you're discussing, okay, you're going to the bank and so on, and the bank say, okay, well, we will finance it. But while you're doing that, he going out and he mortgaging it even more and not telling you. When the bank now is finally ready to execute, they can't execute because they will realize this thing, this property tie up more than anything else, more than this on the ground. And, and that is what we are faced with. We came to them telling them, look, listen, we are willing to pay X amount. $700 million US for the refinery. They say no. Election time. Eh? They say no, 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 no. No, don't pay up front. You can what? You can pay over a period of 13 years. First three years, no moratorium. You pay after after the first, after the fund, what? The first fourth year, you start to pay and so on. Let's just work that out. Um, how, how the, what you would pay, what the installment and so on. Of course, if you get in an offer like that, government is the government making that offer? Of course, if you get an offer like that, you now will recognize that you now have breathing space and that you can expend more money on the uh, assets to refurbish and so on and to bring this thing up to world standard. So you impress an offer like that because you're in good fit. But lo and behold, as we uh, attempt to, to execute the bank say but no somebody have a hole on this on this on these assets the bond holders there's a, a hole on the assets and therefore this thing really can't you can't have that arrangement you know and when we approach them with that say well listen listen you all didn't tell us that 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 um that you have the banks international banks have a hole on these assets you know what he said? said that's not a problem we will fix that. We will get them to release it. We say, okay, all right, well, we're working with you. It turns out that they could not get it released. Here you had now, and I want to explain this good to you so, so that you will understand, because they, they are pushing that, you know, the union don't have any money. Here you had the union now telling their, their fi original financers, hey, listen, thank you very much, because what we, we don't need to put money out up front. We have a different type of configuration of an offer. A one where we will pay down the road and so on for 13 years and, and so on. So we will use less finances now to, to focus on rebuilding these assets. That deal could not go through because of the, the thing was mortgage. So your, you, your grandfather tell you, listen, I'm going to transfer the house to you and you will continue to pay. When you go to the bank, the bank said, no, you, that kind of arrangement can't work. 
So it, if he really wants to give you it, what he will do now is to work with you to ensure that you what raise the capital. So we had very little time now when that happened to go out now, go back out now and to look for capital in, in a post, inside of a pandemic situation, eh? in inside of a situation where the uh, this whole, all of the uh, lending institutions now are uh, being pressured not to get involved in refinery operations and so on because of um, clean fuels and so on and the whole question of environmental um, standards and that kind of thing. So they encourage not to get, so it's difficult to get financing. But here's what, we got interest, people interested in us because of the quality of the proposal and of course because of the location of the assets and so on. Um, uh, um, located at the tip of South America uh, and so on, so that they saw business, good business, sense in it. But they needed time. The government, having won the election, said, no, 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 we're giving you 15 days and so on. 15 days to raise uh, 500 million US. They as a government can't even raise that in 15 months, they're given a union 15. There's a union that they say they committed to ensuring that they get that asset. You tell me about these people, right? But PG, um, did the government lose did the government lose confidence in patriotic energies and technologies and no, by, by extension the OWTU? No, they couldn't. They couldn't lose, no, they couldn't lose uh, uh interest uh in confidence. Uh, confidence. confidence in no. Because we start off telling them that we came to pay with our finances, follow it, to pay 700 million for these assets. They said to us, no, listen, uh, we're giving you a better offer. We, and it's parliament, it's parliament. Eh? I mean, this is an offer that they gave and we accepted that, listen, we'll take a three years moratorium, we we'll organize ourselves, get these assets going, and it'll take 10 years to pay. That just, we just have to work out the details of that. That deal was not supported by their finances, the bondholders, who, whom they borrow from to the hilt, who, while we were discussing, they didn't tell us anything. They were still borrowing on the assets. And so that the deal just could not go through in that way. After spending many months with back and forth, they're not telling us that. They tell us, no, it will work. We will ensure that, that they free up these assets. After spending all of that time, they came and they tell us, well, look, you take a month, you take 15 days um, to get to raise 500 million um, US. Could you, could you imagine that? Could you just, just imagine the magnitude of that? Colm Imbo, the Minister of Finance, uh, in a press conference of, of, uh, about four months ago, said to a reporter in answer to a question, you think international financing easy to raise? Since last year, we were trying to raise this uh, money to deal with COVID. And the government um, now get through sometime in I think March, April, or June this year. So he's making the point that as a government, international financing is, um, is difficult to raise. But you are asking a union in 15 days, having changed the plan, changed the goalposts, to raise that money and then come back and say, well, you know, they can't raise. They are very deceptive and this seedful um, bunch of people. And I, and what I'm telling you, comrade, I say that to, I say that all the time. I say that to them in their face. And they know that, they know that. But, um, but here's what is going to happen. They, uh, they have gone back out and they are hell bent on putting it back in the hands of the multinational. So some international company is going to come and own those assets. And why? Because there's some private arrangement that would be forged. You know, you know the, the whole thing about kickback. OWTU is not involved in kickback. Perhaps if we had said that we were going to build over Bali's house, we, they would have been right a favor them. But OWTU is not about that. They're not about that. Yeah? So, 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 PG, so does that mean to say that the proposal to acquire the, the patriotic energies and technology proposal to acquire petrogen refineries totally is dead? Well, it's, it's what well, they would have. Here's what they did. They, they, they're still with this problem eh, with the bondholders. I mean, if they are honest, it's a hard feat to accomplish. But the facts will show 
that the, the bondholders still have a hold on those assets. They cannot sell it. So here's what. While they would have offered us um, a deal to, to purchase both refinery and the port, they are now selling the refinery because, or, or leasing the refinery because they cannot sell it. So the arrangement that they're going forward with now is a lease arrangement because the same problem exists. But why not come clean and, and say, well, Dr. Trade Union, you spend all your money and so on. We're going to make this happen. You, having won the bid, well, we can't really go through this because these um, bondholders, um, they have a hole on the asset. You take the opportunity to take this lease arrangement and so on. And, and of course, we have our, our people um, backing, backing us would um, spend their money to upgrade the assets because those assets need to be upgraded. Eh? You don't shut down a vehicle, just in your car, you don't put it out by the road um, today and three years down the road, go to and turn your key and it start. And that's just your vehicle. So you could imagine a, a refinery with some 23 plants, um, which needed an um, upgrade when they shut it down. Oh, what what uh, money is, is, is needed to restart that refinery? And I can speak authoritatively on this because I work in the refinery. Um, I can speak authoritatively on, on Petrotrin because I work offshore also and in the fields. So I know Petrotrin. So, PG, someone says, right, and I hear you talk about people suffering in Trinidad and Tobago, and you talk about the budget, right? Yeah. Someone is asking, what are you doing? What is the OWTU doing for the unemployed oil field workers who are suffering currently? Yes. Well, well, that's, well you know, respectfully, I'm not sure what point it, it came in with, um, with the question because all of we, what we are talking about with respect to the refinery and so on, that would have done what? Place a whole uh, significant number of jobs back in the hands of the petrogen workers and so on because it's petrogen workers who are with the proficiency and the experience and so on to restart and operate that refinery and not just the refinery, you know. Here's what was... The, the plan with that to use the uh, revenue and assets of that to get into downstream operations and so on so that we can provide jobs but the government backed by or instructed by their one percent shut that down we are right now we are right now putting a plan before them to uh to um to go back into the fields and to all of those some over some twelve thousand wells they have there are a number of them idle we are right now, as we speak, uh, putting a proposal before the government to reactivate some of those idle wells so that we can put people back to work, put those workers back to work and so on. And let me just say something about that. Now, and I'm, I'm being very, very cautious when I'm, being to, I'm going to be um, explicit about what I'm saying. There was a certain case that was just concluded um, recently uh, on some issue called fake oil. Yeah? Mm -hmm. the, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. The government mm -hmm. and the legacy company Petrotrin and Heritage and those companies lose the case. The mm -hmm. OWTU, the trade union movement, we knew that they were going to lose the case. Mm -hmm. Because if you shut down the company, there is no what evidence. If you send home all the workers and you scatter them, there is no witness. So they were destined to, and in fact, they lose the case. They wanted to lose that case. This is our op opinion. They made one statement that they are going to appeal. That did not happen. Because they can't win the case because there is no evidence, there is no witness. And here's what is going to happen now. The people of Trinidad and Tobago, the same masses who are uh, crawling now with this yoke, economic yoke of taxation on them, they have to compensate the uh, plaintiff in that matter. They have to compensate the, person, the uh, company that won Petrotrin that matter. Pay through their nose. So taxpayers are going to pay for the blundering of the government, whether it's purposeful or not. That is going to, that, in that award, in that judgment, in that um, agreement, is also to allow for what? 10 years 
guarantee of Petrochin's ENP acreages and so on, so access to wells and so on, to produce those wells and sell it back to heritage. More money, more money, more money. And how many of the Petrochin workers will benefit from that? None of them. And that's my point, that we are with the experience. We know where a significant number of idle wells not operated are located. We know the potential for it and the production that it can generate. And that is what, and I'm glad I'm getting the opportunity to tell you that and through you, tell the people who are asking the question. And that is what we are going to be putting before them. And if they are serious about putting people back to work, initiate an initiative driven by the union, they will embrace that. So if you could give a 10 years guarantee the people's asset to, to a certain uh, person in the country through some kind of questionable arrangement. And if you could give that certain person a hundred million in compensation and so on, why can't you put people back to work? The government don't have to spend a cent. We are not asking them to invest money. Eh? Our finances will come and stand with us. We'll go produce those wealth. We'll put workers back to work. We will ensure that the electricians, the mechanics, the well operators and so on, we will ensure that all of those EMP um, um, operators and workers and so on, we will ensure that it generate a type of spin-off activity that people will be back to work. But in the face of what they did, what just occurred, I think that the world would see through their biases if they did not um, support this proposal. And that, as we speak, we are putting the um, final touches on that to put that before the government. You know, they produce a budget. They spoke about oil production and the oil and gas production increase over the next couple of years. Hmm. Not now, you know. That is going to happen down the road. But who is going to do it? Multinational. Here we have a proposal where local people, indigenous people, will increase indigenous crude and gas for the benefit of the people in the country. And that is where that is where we are located in terms of that um, comrade. So they're, they're, they're butching or, or bungling with the energy sector would have seen a fall in revenue for Trinidad and Tobago. Oil production decline in the country. Oil production, since they reorganized uh, Petrochin into Heritage and Paria and so on, crude oil production has fallen. What the average citizen um, has not yet understand, the connection between poor energy performance by the government, loss of revenue, and the fact that they come in to choke you and tax you more, blood out of stone. So when they can't make revenue um, or increase the revenue, they come to the citizens. Someone said taxing the citizens to raise revenue is like standing in a bucket and trying to lift yourself up. And that is where they are. So PG, um, two things, eh? um, I, 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 I like the, um, the answer that you give with respect to what the OW2 is doing for those former workers that were suffering, because I think, I think you kind of, you shift the goalposts a little bit there. <laughs> no, but he also told the truth <laughs> in reference to this case, and I'm very happy that he did that. No, 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 Gary, I get that, I get that, but, yeah. but, but, but what I wanted to hear from him is what the person asks what the OWTU is doing yeah. regarding to those workers that they call it suffering because you indicated too that people yeah. in Trinidad and Tobago suffering. Yeah. And I think they were being very specific as far as what initiative does the OWT have regarding those past OWT workers who may be suffering now. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm, I'm happy for the question um, because we are not just um, saying crying over spilled milk uh, and so on. Uh, because we could have taken the position upstream and say, well, look, listen, when they shut down the refinery, um, yes, you know, cost them out and so on. Rightfully so, cost them out and continue to look to unionize members and that kind of thing. Whoever come, we just, we want to, what, just have <clears throat> our members work there. But we, we grab the opportunity. But we thought we were dealing with fair-minded people, honest people, and so on. Or even if they're not fair, but that they want better for the country and so on, and they want to lift the standard of living of ordinary people. 
and so on. Black people, Indian and African in the country, we thought that that is what they wanted to do, create a balance between the 1% and the rest of us. But that's not what they're about. But anyway, having gone through that and, and gone through the, the deceitfulness of, of and let me call him, call him um, Franklin, this is Khan, um, Lion Khan, um, Keith Rowley, um, Stuart Young. Obviously. And so, yes, yes, those, obviously. Yes, yes. Yes. yes, yes, those are the people who demonize the petrochemical workers, um, tell the country that they're working for too much money and, and, and lied on the petrochemical workers. You're talking about workers who historically would have produced over a hundred billion dollars for this economy. My father and 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 relative to um, Wall Street, I'm sure you know people or your if you check your ancestry in this country, people who would have given their blood, carried pipe and so on and 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 and, and heavy. Uh, metals on their backs and so on to build this place. That is the type of opportunity that Dr. Rowley, if he was forward thinking, would have ensured that they listen. Let me strike a balance. One percent, they can't just own everything in the country. Let me make sure that local ownership, and even if you don't want to give the union, make sure that local ownership, um, local ownership, indigenous ownership, um, take um, over this thing. But no, that is not his plan at all. This is a different. No, you know, you know, comrade. Not everybody that look like you is for you, eh? Go ahead, preach, preach. Yeah, you know, no, no, you know, I'm, preach, I'm, of, I'm, preach, I'm very preach. deep with that, you know. I'm preach. very deep with that because that's the deception that 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 is hitting the people here. So not because you're blacker than me mean that you're for me, you know. And and that that and that is very deep. That is very. But you know, Mister Roger, what I saw too, right, is that this opportunity for what you possibly had there you know it, it would have been personal for the for the for the workers there this is they investing into themselves and we have seen that done across the world where you make the your workers a part of the company and, and, and getting shares and stuff like that and their investment is personal and you get a, a more productive uh, way of getting things done so this is something when i saw that i was like wow yeah this is something excellent but then you know we see where they hijack the plan and, and then they switch around things and try to make it look like it's your fault. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, and, and I appreciate you taking the time to expose them. So feel free to go ahead. No, exactly. No, no, that's the point. Because here's how we were going to broaden that. We were going to, uh, not just the workers there, because the workers accept that, okay, listen, to build back this thing, we're going to come in, we're going to take less and so on, we're going to, uh, we're going to get shares in the thing. Right, fine. But we, 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 we said, listen, do you see the other trade unions and so on? They were, would be allowed to buy shares in this thing. You see the credit union movement, people's organization, they would be allowed to buy, not the banks, eh? not the banks and the big business and the 1%, but ordinary people who are now stakeholders will be able to be shareholders in those assets. And that was the vision that we had for this thing. And instead of those people working with us to make sure that, listen, when you drive past and you look at those assets, you feel a part of it because it is not now Texaco. Or, or, or Amoko, it is patriotic, it is our, and the name patriotic, by the way, it wasn't um, coined lightly, eh? it was very, very deep, because we thought it was a deep sense of patriotism for the union to take all of its resources and go behind these assets. But what they saw, they say we will break the union, shut down the company, send home all the workers, there are no members, and so on, make them spend all the money, and then um, we will move on to where we really wanted to go. But here's the catch 22. We could not come right. But some people will say, you know, we should not have. But I am um, not with regret because we could not have seen that opportunity and not grasp it with honest hands and minds and so on and heart. We did that. That they did what they did. Every unfair game has to play over. And the story for Petrochin is not over as yet. So here's the other chapter that is taking place, that which I just described, where we are now in the EMP now side, where we are seeing they do not have the, the knowledge, the experience, and the resources, that's heritage, to activate those wells. We have the resources to spend, um, to invest in those things, to bring production on, then they will get some, um, some increased revenue, and the workers will get a share out of that. And that's where that is the proposal that we have. We are currently, as we speak, I just came uh, concluded a meeting earlier on where we are finalizing that proposal to put before 
the Minister of Finance. Here, Minister of Finance, you are going to get increased oil production and therefore increased revenue at a time when you when increase um, oil prices you the country can benefit more from that now comrades if they refuse that i don't think it bears any more explanation at all um from from the owto because how could they refuse at a time like that i think i know the answer to this to that question but you understand the point i'm making yeah, yeah. so so, so PG, i want to ask you a question right and this, you made this statement, right? Do you still believe the opposition leader felt a, 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 a dealt a, a fatal blow to the acquisition process of the petroleum refinery? Yeah. You know, and yeah. that you had yeah. indicated that they would not see in light of the day. Do you still believe that? That they would have what you mean the position that they held on it? Yeah, the opposition leader. Yes. Dealt a fatal think, blow to the acquisition think, think, process of the yeah. petroleum refining, and the yeah. process did not see light of the day. Yeah, but I, I think that that they would have been very very um, foolish and perhaps I don't know, probably just yeah, stupid, to tell the petroleum workers that they would not get the refinery should they come into office. That's a statement that they were making, and we had a difficulty with that. Because here you have uh, the union expending its resources to achieve these assets, and you are saying that we will not get it, um, and that we cannot, um, um, to some extent, we cannot operate that. I think that is what they were saying. They were dead wrong, because the people who were uh, involved in, uh, listen, the people who were involved in the, the consortium, you know, there's this myopic thinking right now, eh, um, held by it's a kind of a third world banana republic kind of thinking that unless you see the white man or the foreigner, you feel that you can't do business. You want to hear you. Yes, you know, want to hear you. You, know, you, want to hear you. you have the best plan, but because it's you saying it, nobody wanna hear. They will bring in the so-called expert who does not, don't know anything. He take your plan and you tell them and they say, Yes, that's the best plan in the world. You, you understand? You exactly. know why? Because exactly. we are we are not emancipated. We are still bound by mental chains and so on. We are still on the plantation. Many of them still on the plantation. Dr. Rowley, still on the plantation. Yeah? Yeah, he's still on the plantation. He's just what they consider to be the one of those who were allowed to come in and sit and, and, and sup with, with Massa and so on for a short time. But, but, but PJ, may I ask you a question? You're trying to deal with the government, right? And if you're making those type of statements, doesn't it kind of make it a little more difficult for you guys to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, yeah well, no, but you, you see... He called them out. I, I agree with him. He called them out. Our DNA, our DNA, DNA camera, um, yeah. it's not one. Where yeah. because we want something, we will do something for that. Right is right. The people of Trinidad and Tobago deserve a better share of the pie, economic pie, and whether or not I call out Dr. Rowley, the people still deserve that. And therefore, it is on the basis of the merit of the people, what they deserve, we think that they should get that. And if we feel that Dr. Rowley, which is what, why he shut down Petrushan, eh? because if we feel that he's going the wrong way, it is our duty to tell him that, hey, listen, uh, Dr. Rowley, this is not what Dr. Williams wanted for Trinidad and Tobago. This is not what even Patrick Manning wanted for Trinidad. You know, in all of those prime ministers, the, none of them would have uh, interrupted our road towards economic in, um, uh, and energy independence by shutting down in the refinery. So here you have in all in, in this region, refineries through their own economic circumstance can't operate. Problems in Venezuela and so on. Problems in Curacao and so on with their refinery. Yours operating, but you shut it down. I mean, the Caribbean leaders, they were aghast. They were amazed to see that that happened. All because this fella get vexed because the OWT you say, you're not running the country good. And they shut down the refinery, send home all the workers and so on. And that story continues. So, PG, I would, I would, I would, I would, I Gary, Gary, hold on a minute. Let me go for a quick station identification and then we will come right back. Um, PG, we're going to go for a quick, we're going to go for a quick station identification. We're either stay right there, don't go nowhere. Of yes. course, we have with us no other than President General. That's PG Ansel, Ansel Roger from the OWTU. And he's having a, a, a fantabulous discussion with us tonight here in the village. Stick and yeah. stay, don't go nowhere. So we're going to go for a short station identification 
And we'll be right back after this message. At the end of Village to the DAC triplets on WZY 95.9 FM. Stick and stay. You're listening to WZYE 95.9 FM. You are listening to WZYE 95.9 FM. The most influential name in Caribbean radio in the tri-state area. Broadcasting from East Orange, New Jersey. The most influential name in Caribbean radio. WZYE 95.9 FM. And of course, we are back with you. It's in the village with the dark triplets on WZY 95.9 FM. We come to you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. That's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. And, and we have with us in the village tonight, you know, a gentleman that most people, you know, in Trinidad and Tobago know no other than PG, you know, answer Roger from the OWTU. So, PG, there's a question in the chat, right? It says, Mr. Roger, do you think the closing of Petrochen had something to do with AV, AMV? Well, he said that all, yeah, but go ahead. Well, well, well court close and you know, they like to sue, eh? <laughs> yeah, they like to sue, they like to go get KPI and there and there. So. But I think if if the the person who asked that question, hmm. which question is likened to a number of questions that people are asking, and they're expressing a particular opinion, if they believe that, I can't fault them for believing that. If they believe that, because if you destroy the evidence, you have no case. If you send away the witness, you have no case. And that is the sum total of what occurred. In fact, I can tell you that there were reports very early on the closure of um, Petrochin back in 2018. We received reports that their particular department, the repository for all of those records and so on, that it was broken into. And, um, and those um, reports which had to do with how much oil was received and, and how much oil was received and claimed for and all of those things, and that was taken out. So, so we have our strong opinion as to why that happened. Um, but, but whether or not we believe it or the people believe it, yes or no, the consequence of it is that the taxpayers now have to fork out at a time in a pandemic um, to pay for the misdeeds of the government. So, so PG, how come that didn't hit the news that that this place was broken into, and yeah, um, and these documents were stolen? We said it. We said it in our camp. We said it in mm -hmm. our in our in our campaign. You remember? And let me just remind um, everybody and the world: we waged a campaign. You know, we were against the closure of the refinery, not just for the preservation of the jobs of those who work there. But because of the hardship, we knew that the whole southern community, from Point Pierre to um, St. Margaret's to, uh, to the all of San Fernando, to Ikakas, to Faisabad, to the whole of the southern um, community. And so we know that they were going to be impacted adversely like that. So that the, the bacon shark person, the person who, pre who prepares lunch and so on, the pelau, and who the caterers, and so on, they are not workers, eh? um, the doubles vendor, and so on, the people who so provide services, not just in the southern part of the country, you know, throughout Trinidad and Tobago, in for one kind or another, provided services that Petrochin. Petrochin was a sort of an economic hub around which the uh, economy revolved, and so on. But they couldn't see that. What they saw is um, that if they shut it down, they will get rid of the union, but this union is, is was here long before the PNM, and will be here long after the PNM have departed. Nope. <laughs> Gary, yeah, you wanna, Gary, you wanted to say something? Okay, so Mr. Roger, there's another question here. Mr. Roger, did you know that the government was closing down Petrotrain? And if you did, why didn't you have a press conference or was given a promise to be able to buy it? No, let's just let's go back on the steps. We were in a process. We did as a union, we were in a process with the board of directors, some new board of directors they had, um, headed by a Syrian man, that's Dr. Rowley's friend. Um, he put him as the as the um, chairman of the board, a fellow by the name of Wilfred Espionaire. Okay. We were in a process for which we found an agreement to reorganize the company because for quite a while we were saying that the company ought to be restructured and to be able to position itself better, more malleable, to treat with 
the vagaries of oil prices and so on, the shocks and fall, rise and fall of oil prices internationally, and to be able to deal with the fall in crude production and so on, and, the, and to increase refinery throughput. So we, we agreed. We signed an agreement to that effect. Yeah? And that was in, in April of 2018. I'm telling you, an agreement that was registered in the courts. And the union don't sign agreements lightly like that. We agree that, listen, what will, might very well happen is that we have, over the next two years, some 1,500 workers departing through uh, uh, retirement and so on. And therefore, here is an opportunity for us to trim down the, the numbers of workers and so on to allow the company to breed, expand, and then we'll come back and employ more again. So all of those things we agree to. Dr. Rowley got vexed because here comes Labor Day, Labor Day 2018. Labor Day 2018, we criticized Dr. Rowley's handling of the economy. We criticized his handling of um, crime and so on. We criticized them for rising food prices. And we said to him that you promise, you promise that you would do a better job than those who you took over from. And today the people are reeling under pressure. Added to that, we were chastising him for his friend, who was the, the same SPNA, the chairman of Petrotrin, signing this agreement and not if beginning to discuss with us to effect it. So he had April, then he had May, he had June and so on. Dr. Rowley, we did an evaluation of his performance publicly. Dr. Rowley got vexed. That's the only reason why this refinery shut down. Eh? Now, Dr. Rowley is the, is the type of person that if you get him vexed, he will mash up the place, and and you only have to he hear what Patrick, you. And he Patrick you. said yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. A raging yeah. bull. So he got vexed, and he said, "Well, I go show them. They feel they wanted to, to to tell me what to do. I will show them." So he now comes up with a proposal to close the refinery, come out and say he's coming out of the refinery business. We were against that. We took them to court. The, or based on the agreement. We won the matter in the court based on the agreement. But the court did not go far enough to stop them. And that is a fact. We raised a, a national campaign all over the country calling on them not to, to close the refinery because of the problems the country will experience. Not only the workers, but all of these people who some 40,000 persons were affected um, uh, indirectly because of the spin-off effect in the southern community and throughout Trinidad and Tobago. We had a match from point, from, from point up here to Port of Spain. I myself, for the first time, walked so much, walked from point up here three days to a Port of Spain, where some 30,000 persons call on the government not to shut down the refinery. They still went ahead and shut down the refinery. Now, we did what we had to do. After it was shut down now, after it was shut down now, and he made the offer, then we accepted the offer. You, you, you see the sequence of events. We were against, and we are still saying that it was wrong to do that, especially now because we have vindicated. Yeah? So that's it. That's the sequence of events. And then we and then that is why we said that wait, that they're trying to set us up by telling us we should buy the refinery. No, no, no. We should, we should. You should not shut it down because we could not agree when he made when he made this first um, offer. We were still in the process of taking them to court and so on. So we could not agree to buy something that we said shouldn't shut down. Mm -hmm. When they finally shut it down, then is where we put the, in the proposal and we said, well, listen, um, we are going to seriously acquire these assets and so on. And because those international, you see, the value of, 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 uh, input coming from workers. Sometimes the myopicness of a government don't see that. Eh? But those persons outside saw that this year you have a group of workers. If we work with them and the union, we could get this thing started. And there's where we, our proposal found resonance and so on. And there's where we came up with the best proposal. Mind you, let's go back. 76, um, 77, 77 bidders internationally 76 bid for those assets dr rowley said that the assets no good he said it's like a old car you put it out by the road for scrap and who want to buy it come who will go want to um, 
somebody want to come and take it, they bring a record and take it. You know, you feel that he have he's so cheeky and he have all the stocks. So, so, but when he said that, like how people are uh, hearing me now internationally, internationally they heard him. So the, the, the offer that they made on the refinery was one for scraps. We knew the value of it and we put in a, a very um, valuable offer of some 700 million. Nobody else came close to that. Nobody. And you would see now at the end of it, just ask them when they give it away, on whether it's lease or whatever, how much those people end up paying for it. You, you would see. So the union who knows the value willing to take over the assets had its international financiers backing them to pay 700 million. I'm saying that to make this point that we would have had by far the best offer and they could not have in the face of that best offer um, blanket. But what they saw at that, at that time was the local government election. And they say, aha, uh -huh, this is our opportunity. And you would cap their call him with saying that the union came with the best proposal. You think the UNC could do that? We will move them from all kind of, all kind of, all kind of, all kind of statements and so on. But they are very deceitful and deceptive people. This is the worst PNM you have ever experienced. If you ever experienced um, PNM, comrade. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, PG, are we going to see the OWTU in the street protesting after the end of the SOE? Ah, glad you asked that because it might have slipped me to address that very important question. The reason why we are under a state of emergency right now, comrade. Is they want is just that they want to prevent that. The only there was some other little group that said not to, that they wanted to end, but the only formidable group that came out and and march and said you know you know sometimes I have to remind people eh, because we are forgetful people and if you don't know your history you're doomed to repeat it and end up in problems. And so we are a country we happy go lucky sometimes and we forget our history. The only group of per persons that March and demanded that they end that state of emergency is the trade union movement. Another group, honestly, another group would have, uh, they came out, but I'm talking about a cross, a cross section of trade unions representing the interests I had described earlier in this, um, in this interview here. And so we call on them to end the state of emergency because the state of emergency is only being used to oppress the press and to curtail the activities of those who have a dissenting voice. They are crushing dissent. Exactly, exactly. I think it's been... What they don't want is people to criticize them. Any progressive trade um, leader or government will want to hear uh, what the trade unions have. They do we not agree, and we don't expect them to agree, but engage us meaningfully in discussion. We join with them in a tripartite arrangement called um, National Tripartite Advisory Council. And you know what they were using that for? Just for PR to say, well, we have the unions in a tripartite arrangement. While at the same time, we said, well, listen, if you have labor, business, and government at the table here, let us discuss this issue of your sending home workers. Let us discuss this. You want to shut down petrol train? No discussion at all. So while we are at the table discussing with them, licks for our members, workers going home by the thousands and so on. State enterprises shutting down, restructuring unilaterally. We said, no, we can't take that. We live in that process. We live in that sham um, process and so on. And therefore, we are saying that the only reason why they're extending that state of emergency is to curtail and to crush dissent, the dissenting voices and so on. So that the man in the street, those who uh, who want to say something about this government cannot come out and protest the backsides um, against what they are doing. And that is why we are waiting. That is why we said that when it, you know, we had an activity called Freedom Day, the 1st of September because we called on the opposition not to support the government to, um, to extend the state of emergency. Then it went ahead because they have the constitutional majority to do it and they extended it. But comrades, it must come to an end. And when it comes to an end, well, is your asking answers. We will be in the streets. We will be in the streets. I, I, I want to make a suggestion and I've been making a suggestion to some of the activists is to, to protest from where you are, from your own property in the front yard. Don't stop the protesting. Protest from yes. wherever you are. Everybody don't have to be in Port of Spain. Protest in the whole country one day, but protest from wherever you are. Put up a sign, stand outside there, post it and publish it, but raise your voice. Don't let the government suppress your voice. You yes. know, I'm, sure I, I'm calling on you for the, the kind of influence you have in the country to, and you've seen what's happening, to mobilize against them. SOE, you I, know, I, 
Agreed, agreed. 100 percent We had some of that. They can't look about hundred thousand a week. They can't look about hundred thousand a week. And you yeah, have to come behind you. That's the point. That's the point. And you know where we the the the, the, the location we coming from, commerce. I think that it's the is really we protesting because we want more pay, you know. Let's just get that right. I mean, yes, that two people trade unions protest, right? Fine, but that's not what the issue is now. You know, we are protesting for our very survival and for our claiming a space in this land for the ordinary man to be to have a say and to to own something. That is what we're protesting for because if they go ahead with this property tax and people can't pay it, they're coming for your property. Exactly. So my so my grandfather leave a little piece of property for me, him but telling me that if I don't fill out some form, he will charge me some five thousand dollars. If I don't pay, he will come for my property. This is a Taliban government we have here. But, but PG, but PG, but PG, don't you think, don't you think it's time that Trinidad and Tobago have some type of property tax. And let me say this, sir. Let me say this, sir. Um, I hear the opposition party saying, ask the tax. But when they were in power, they read in parliament that they were going to impose taxes. And when they came out of power in 2015, the PNM just continued the same policy with respect, instead of repealing the tax. Right? So, to me, I'm living here in the United States of America, right? Gary's also living here in the United States of America. Yeah, yeah. There has to be some form of property tax in Trinidad and Tobago. Some and form, I think, but not yeah. the way they're going on, Sam. But, but, but Gary, I think the people of Trinidad and Tobago have to come to the realization at yeah. some point in time, there's going to have to be property yeah. tax in Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Can I say something? Go ahead, sure, sure. Yes, sure. yes. And, um, and we agree with that 100%. But there are a number of things wrong with that. Uh, first of all, we said that, yes, you must pay some form of property tax. But property tax must not be used to, um, to raise revenue for government spending, to go um, to the exchequer and so on. The property tax that you pay, it is well spent to ensure that you are, as a citizen, your services are provided and so on. So, so that's one aspect of it. What they do with the tax, uh, it, we need to ensure that it reaches the benefit and provides services for the people who pay it. We must pay. Now, the other thing is the, is the formula that they have derived for that property tax. All of those things have to be reviewed because you can't tell me that I build my, my, build my property here. I, over the years, send my children to school and so on, the family get a little bigger and so on. I increase, I put a little bathroom, extra room and an extra bathroom and so on for which I would have paid tax for those um, material and so on. And now you come in and you tell me that, hey, listen, your property increased value, rental value. I am not now renting, but they attach me to a rental value for which I must pay um, tax on. In addition, I build my thing here. Somebody come and build a big house next to me. And this whole area, my value, rental value go up. I didn't do one thing, but my rental value gone up and I had to pay more. Property tax. So you find something wrong with all of what we're talking about? The no, man, the, the, the uh, man who fight and he go to the credit union, he put on this little extra room and so on. He now is faced with a formula that moves him from paying to, um, X amount increased by a thousand percent. The other thing we say, come on, before I finish this, the other thing we say is that, listen, this is the wrong time to impose that type of hardship on the people. People not, it's, it is as though these people believe it is as though these people believe that if you're not working, you're going to get more money. I don't know how, how I don't know how they conceive that in their mind. So, so many thousands, over 100,000 persons lost their job, but now is the time. You have to send your student to school, but now is the time. And they're making their belief. Here's the, here's, here's the deception that this is a tax for UNC people, for um, rich people. Rich people, this is to make sure that them rich people pay. But if you increase my tax, so I now have to pay. 5000 a year, 3000 a year, 2000 a year. When I was not paying that amount of money, but now in a hardship time, that is plenty of strain for me who not working. So we are saying, here's what. Let's deal it in phase. Deal with the um, the industrial. They're not paying what they're supposed to pay. Then come to the commercial and so on, the businesses. And then come to the residents. Then you come to the residence, you know, and, and be, all because of the timing of it. 
He's like, if these people, they may care, boy. They will, they will, they will <laughs> talk to you. Well, I, the timing. And, and they're really making people, people, people believe that they, these are UNC thing, you know. But when you get the paper in your, in your, in your so and so, when you get to the thing, you know, you, if the UNC yeah. had to pay or big rich people had to pay, they could afford that. Yes, I have no problem with that. But why are you ex increasing me exponentially? I am a daughter to send to school and so on. I had to pay money in university and all of these things come around. The people who will be, and this is what people have to understand, eh, man. The people will be hardest hit with that. Why are we jumping up and winding down for pigtail for PNM and a set of foolishness? All yeah. the people will be hardly the hardest hit with that is ordinary black people, you know. Black people, you know. And 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 that is what we get tied up with. So I I cannot support Dr. Rowley and them and the foolishness because my people's lot is not being improved by that. So I can't jump up and say, hey, property tax, hey, we have to pay. Yes, we have to pay. We accept that. But let's sit down and in a, in a situation like now and determine how will we share this burden of adjustment? All of that is born on the back side. Like, is like, this man I care about? You know, back in the plantation, you know the man who they used to give to hit the whip? Massa couldn't hit a whip as hard as, as one of us, you know? <laughs> he used to look for one of the, the blackest and the strongest one of us to hit us, you know? Because he had to convince Massa that he is for Massa, so he will put pressure on us. Prove the loyalty. Prove when he loyalty. Cracked, yes, when he cracked that whip, Massa love him. Yeah. You know, you know, PG, listen, listen to this, yeah. right? Listen to this. We here and people in Trinidad <laughs> like to compare themselves or, or even the government or even any government for talks about things that's going on outside of all different other countries, right? But when time comes for them to come to the people here in the diaspora, who have the experience to help them in certain situations, they ignore us. Mm -hmm. All right. We are we are we we, we are ignore. We, we 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 like we don't even exist. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I hear you with regarding the property tax, and mm -hmm. it makes sense that you know you have it in phases where you can have, you know, you, you know, the, the commercial properties, other people, and give people a sense of some time mm -hmm. where you know, I'm gonna tell you, listen, at this point in time, a year from now, so to speak. Right, mm -hmm. we're gonna implement property taxes on residences as mm -hmm. an example. And we can start with, for example, you can start with five million dollar properties as an example, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and and work your way down. I mean, I understand that. It's not like I don't understand that. All I was saying is that at some time we have to understand. I'm saying we because I'm a Trinbago and I'm a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. We have to understand that there's gonna be property tax yeah. in the country. But let me ask you a next question, right? This is well, something. Hold on a second. Right. But what we have here, like what, what, what Mr. Roger was saying, the, the businesses, what we call, like you have certain businesses in the area, certain industry in, in your town, it's called raidables, right? Right, Those, right. This Commercial have to properties. Defer the course, uh, and the way we have it structured here is that the local property tax pays for the school, pays for the police, pays for fixing the road. And, and yeah. the way that things are done, first of all, local government reform is absolutely needed in the country. The money has to go to the municipal government in your city, in your town, to operate yes. under that budget. They have it going in a consolidated fund, according to what we were told. That's right. That's okay? right. Well, I, I, they could I, I, Gary, they want with it and give who friend they want the contract. So, Gary, we, we, we have discussed that here. And I said absolutely that that money should not be going in a consolidated fund. That money should be going. But we have to, we have to actually find the mechanics. You know how we are actually well, going to get that accomplished. Remember, no, hold on a second. Remember, Doctor Rolly come in your house. I always like to bring that bad, and he wants me to put. <laughs> he, he, Doctor Rolly come in, in in Ansem house, and he wants we import over here, right? And he, when he win government, he don't want to hear nothing from me. That's it. Okay, that's the, only, that's the man you described, that one. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, when he wants to win election, he's your best friend. Here we partner. We won. We Trinidad. Really we my brother. <laughs> you know. He put on a dhoti and he gone in south and sit down with the Indians there, yeah. right? But in the meantime, he gone in the north and told the African people against the Indians and said the Indians have everything and all yes. they have nothing, right? Yeah. Right? And blame the Indians for working hard and selling doubles and planting yeah. rice and sugar cane yeah. and some work in the industry with you, right? Yeah. But yes. what I'm saying to you is, yeah, I was telling Ansem that from the time this man took government from 2015, he started destroying our economy from day one. All right, and and I'm watching. Uh, I'm I'm asking you to watch Stuart Young, with where he might be creating a platform to bring some Chinese investor to take over the oil refinery business in the country. And I'm saying if we make that move, I say we raise hell. 
and I stand in, 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 in solidarity with you with that. Now, 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 PG, you had indicated, right, um, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing here now, you said people are not going to enjoy any relief at the grocery. Prices are going to continue to soar even after the reduction in VAT on certain food items, right? However, I'm PG, I want to say this. If, I, 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 if I'm a poor black disadvantaged family from Chumaka Clavantil, I use Chumaka Clavantil because I grew up in Chumaka Clavantil. I spent yeah. the first 18 years of my life in Chumaka Clavantil, right? Yeah. And I am able to go to the grocery store. And I have to go to the grocery store twice a week or once every two weeks. And I'm able to save at 20 or $25, right? Doesn't that, doesn't that 20 or $25 afford me to do a little other things that I wouldn't be able to do with now these items that have been removed from, from VAT have been removed from these items? No, I, I, I think you're, you're, you're glad. If you're provoking me, I'm glad because that is exactly what I want to explain. Now, there's a, a trade-off. The trade-off for that, first of all, those prices are, are not going to stay because you're in a liberalized um, market yeah. and economy. The, uh, the merchant will set their prices. Mm -hmm. They will set their prices on the basis of the importation because in, to import now is even more. Transportation yeah. costs. Transportation, transportation costs. And a number of factors impact that. Yeah. Not yeah. The least being transportation. And transportation is driven by the increase in price of fuel. Yeah? So that's, a, I mean, already. Already you have the maxis and the taxis and the transportation hubs in. They, they, they increase it already. That happened already. Already you have the transportation, the goods and services, man, increase it. Already you have uh, people having to pay more forex to clear goods and uh, um, to bring in goods and so on. Because the economy that we're running is still dependent on um, importing food and so on and not promoting agriculture and local food production and so on. So we import most of our food. So when this businessman faced with all of that, you think you think that little um, no pain, um, uh, no fat and those things, you feel he, will, he wouldn't absorb that and go beyond that? It's going to happen. They already said that they're going to increase it. So that is one. But when you put, when you, when you juxtapose that now with the, the what you as a citizen facing, here's where a little and $20, if you get that, eh? Where twenty dollars go? Increase water rate, increase electricity rate, and its knock-on effect. Increase. You saw what they did last week. They moved to, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Moved to increase the cost of um, LPG and so on. So the LPG is a basic input for what bacon, shark, doubles, um, food, and so on. So all of those things will increase if I had to pay more for the gas to cook those things. All right, and of course, I did talk about the increase in the fuel and so on for, for vehicles. Property tax, yeah? And all of those things, when you when you look at that, no $20, if you have saved that on any good, would um, would save your comrade. The merchant is going to send up his price. The cost of living is going to spiral here out of control. We are in a liberalized uh, market and so on. They're free to set their prices. They will, and it's, and it's as though, like all of them, they steam up because they, they are on the same, same, same price and so on. What we need here is, is to be able to the same land that they're going to charge me property tax on is to my grandfather and, and your grandfather, or they should make provision for us um, to get ownership of land easier so that we can produce um, our own food here in this country. You know what this you, we put a proposal before before the um, government we said listen when you when Karani was closed down one of the things that they would have done is give land to the um, Karani workers kudos the petrochine has some 76000 acres of land in this country you close down the, you put you displace some 5000 plus workers what it is to take off 5,000, not even 5,000 acres, because everybody wouldn't get an acre, but set aside, let's say, 5,000 or less acres of land to distribute to the petrogen workers. So that will encourage growing your food and so on, the kitchen garden and all of those things. We put that proposal before them. During election time, they take that as their own proposal. They say, well, they're going to give land. You know what they're doing now? Hmm. A few workers in some lottery, some some lottery um, arrangement, spin some lottery and say, um, you won, you have won your opportunity to get petrochin land as an ex-petrochin worker. That is not, uh, I tell you, 
We in oh. we in real problem here. <laughs> so that, so that's easy before, before you go. Last last quick question before you go, right? Um, a yeah, guy because we have um we have the next yeah, guest yeah. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Um. PG, why uh -huh. are you why are you calling for the removal of the Attorney General Faris Awari? And in addition, are you also calling for the removal of the president? Well, I haven't reached the, the president yet. Let me just still talk about the Attorney General. You mean you the president yet? Yeah, I mean the president yet. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you talk about the Attorney uh, General. You know, you know. One, one thing I people may may not like me because of my consistency. And when I say me, I'm talking about my union. So that if it's convenient today, what I say today, I fall in your garden and it favor you, the flowers grow, you love me. Mm. So PNM people that set up, the, the, the PNM people hug me up when I was against the former attorney general, all of the ills of the former um, UNC government. We were, as the government, Dr. Rowley benefited from the, when they put him out of parliament, we stood up against that. We said that is wrong. Yeah? When, when um, the, the stopping issue in Tobago and all of the problems that he had, we said, no, that is wrong. Give the man an opportunity. We, we, the trade union movement, would have been on the streets checking the history more than anybody else saw the period when um, Kamala was in office against all of the corruption, all of the issues that were taking place. Dr. Rowley benefited from that. Now, it cannot be that because you come into office and you're doing the same thing that I can't criticize you. I will be deceitful and deceptive or even more than you if I encourage that. So what was wrong yesterday has to be wrong today. Wrong and right cannot be determined by who in office. And therefore, the, therefore, the former Attorney General, um, Ram Logan, yeah. And Adam Logan, we would have mm -hmm. criticized the Range Rovers and all of that, all of that issue. You could imagine if he had a vehicle that, as Attorney General, custodian of the law and so on, that did not transfer for what? For what? For four years, you sold a vehicle and you transfer. The PNM would have been burning down tongue, calling for his removal. And therefore, we're saying that, you see, that and another issue that we'll talk about at another time. And many other issues, we talk about the Attorney General, we feel that it is right to call for his removal. If you had the former Attorney General, um, children on the range shooting and so on, and all of this, all of this, um, children on the range gate, vehicle transfer gate, yeah, uh, witness tampering gate. If you had all of those things happening, the PNM would have been pulling down the town. You yourself as Wall Street would have been on the radio calling for the, uh, for the removal <laughs> of the Attorney General. Yeah, let us let's 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 be let's be real. Yeah, good for one, good for all. And people they wouldn't like that I am saying that now because it is PNM. But I'm saying that it is not PNM country. It's not UNC country. It is the people of Trinidad and Tobago country. And any like government it. in office have to work for the people. And if they're not working for the people, indeed they're working against the people. The people have to move them. And there's where I'm located. So That's PG, I, I would yeah. like to see you mobilize, really. Yes. So, yeah. So you know, PG, yes. we, we want to thank you so very kindly. But we always ask all our guests here, if you had to send a message to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, what would be your message to the Prime Minister? And you need to listen to the people. You need to, you know, to be all-inclusive, less arrogant and be all-inclusive, to come down from that high horse and so on. And let's discuss, you know, the um, former... Um, PNM Prime Minister Patrick Manning would have said, um, I don't agree with you, but let's talk. But it really is not talking, it's his way or the highway, and that way is taking the country into no way, no man's land. So it's continue food in, um, prices for the people, increase water rate, electricity rate, property tax is, is selling out of state enterprises, no jobs. This is what we face. In, in Trinidad and Tobago. And the most salient and potent message I want to, if and I wish I could carry that to him, is to stop the self hate. Stop hating your own people. It's a, a kind of self hate that is taking place. And if you ever had any dealings with the man and you and you check it again, it's like that man feel that you know, now he reach, and nobody else should reach because he's up where the air is rare, where the 1% is, is near. 
nobody and everybody else is a set of little minions and nobodies and so on. The country don't even have a commissioner of police. We imagine that. If that was happening under the UNC, I would have a show with a year on the radio between 10 and 12 in the morning. This is Wall Street. Um, <laughs> Wall Street calling. You know what you all are experiencing here in Trinidad and Tobago is like no other. And so I'm listening and paying attention to you all. That's all right. Yeah? But, Mr. Roger, I would definitely like to have you back as soon as possible. We need to arrange them. Thank you very much for the opportunity, brother. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. It's it's to to get to for our country. Yeah, man. We have to move the lot of who? Not the one percent. Ordinary Indians and Africans, we have to move them from where they are and have them rise and be and be equals. That is where I want. I want to be able to send my daughter and my children to university and not frighten that they will take the my property away from me with property tax and so on, which in a pandemic boy. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share hey, this. With you. PG and Sir Rose, thank you so very kindly. Yeah, we appreciate it. Take yeah, care. Yeah, All right. Thanks. Yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah, man. Ooh.